The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom just came out and broke all kinds of records. So I thought this would be a good time to talk about Zelda A Link to the Past, and how you could make a game like that in GDevelop. The art you see here is from a premium asset pack in the GDevelop asset store, but you don't need the art to make this game. So use whatever art you have available, or pick up these packs. So the first thing you want to do with any top-down game in GDevelop is add the top-down behavior to the player object. So if we open up the hero, go to behaviors, and then go to add behavior, you'll see it right here. You just add that behavior, and then go over to behaviors, and turn off rotating object. And from that point, the character will be able to move using the arrow keys. But the next thing for this top-down style of game is Z-ordering. And for this, we want to go into our objects, start with the hero, and change its origin point to be at the base of the object. And then do the same thing for all of the other environment pieces that you want your character to be able to move around and interact with. Then you would open up the Groups panel and add a new group. In this case, I've called the group Environment, and I've added all of the objects that I want to affect. And then in the event sheet, I have this event where at the beginning of scene, we change the Z order of the environment group by setting it to the Y position of the environment group. So every object in that group will be sorted by their own Y position, which is now that origin point that's at the base. And then we do the same thing for the jar, but then we make an event with no condition and use that action for the hero, changing the hero's Z order based on its Y position. And the last thing we need to do is go in and change the collision masks. When an object is first created, the collision mask will take up the entire space of the image. So you change it to a custom collision mask, and change the size to make it fit the base of the object, or what looks like the base of the object. And then do the same thing for the hero and anything else in scene that you want the hero to be able to interact with. And then in the event sheet, in that event with no condition, we use the action separate objects to move the hero away from the environment group. So the environment group will stay put, and the hero will be moved. And then as a sub-event, is a condition that checks if the jar has been lifted. And if that is false, then move the hero away from the jar, just like it was an environment piece. And if I preview the game, you can see the characters walking around, being separated from objects. But to this point, the character would just be a flat image, and not the animated character that you see on screen. So, how do we do the animations? Well, in the object, we have two variables for this, direction and state, and both of them are strings, which means text. And then if we go to properties, we'll see the animations. And the animations are all titled in a way that makes sense with those two variables before. One half is the direction, and the other half is the state. And if I go down through here, you'll see all of them. Left idle, up idle, right idle, down item stand, left attack, up attack, right attack, and so on. So to begin with, there's this group of events that are choosing the direction. If the hero has the up key pressed or simulated, change the text of the variable direction of the hero to up. And then if down is pressed, change it to down. If left is pressed, change it to left. If right is pressed, change it to right. Okay, so those were the directions. Now let's talk about walking and idle. So in this event, the condition is whether the Boolean variable carrying object is false, which means that you're not carrying something. And if that variable is false, then we move on down to the other events. Starting with hero is moving, and the text variable state of the hero is not attack. So you're not attacking, but you are moving. In which case, the text variable state gets changed to walk. And then the next one down is if the hero isn't moving, and the text variable state of the hero isn't attack, so you're not moving and you're not attacking, then it's changed to idle. So we're just looking at whether you're walking or idle. And then we go down the sheet, and we'll see this event to play the results. And the condition is comparing two strings, so if the hero's animation name, so if the animation that's playing currently, doesn't equal the direction plus the state, set the animation of hero to equal to the direction string plus the state string. So in this case, it's up, down, left, or right, plus walk or idle. And that's how this works. When I press down and the character moves, that state goes from the direction it was in to down, plus now the character's moving, so it changes to walk. So the animation that plays is down, walk. So that's how this is working. It's direction plus the state, and that's the animation that's being played. But for now, 
check out this video.